This is about Henrietta Leavitt, the most famous astronomer that you never heard of. She revolutionized our view of the heavens just as much as Copernicus and Galileo, so if you know of them, you should know of her. Ever since astronomers looked at the sky with a telescope, they noticed that something weird's happening in Andromeda. You know Andromeda, chained to a rock, going to be eaten by a sea monster, rescued by Perseus. Yeah, that Andromeda. Anyway, something strange happening in Andromeda right there. It's like... Thing. What is it? Is it is it a galaxy? Is it a nebula? Charles Messier called it number 31 on his catalog. So what is this thing? Well, here are some sketches and some photographs from the 1800s into the 1900s. And this, this is a great debate. And this is what Henrietta Leavitt will solve. And she'll revolutionize our entire view of the universe. Anyway, it's a great debate. And the person who seemed to be getting the better of the debate was this guy, Harlow Shapley. He thought that the Andromeda Nebula was just a condensing star pretty close all inside our Milky Way galaxy, which was the entire universe according to him. The only problem is he was wrong. So how do we go from this view of the universe, all wrapped up inside the Milky Way galaxy itself, to another view of the universe, where the Andromeda galaxy is a galaxy similar to the Milky Way. We're going to collide together, Milky Way and Andromeda. Most galaxies, however, are flying apart in this big bang in this expanding universe. How do we go from one view of the universe to the other? Well, that's Henrietta Leavitt. She did that. Working at Harvard, working with other human computers at Harvard University, looking at pictures of stars. And we'll get to those in a second, but what is she trying to do here? She's trying to figure out how big things are, how far away things are. If all you knew is that the Statue of Liberty was a little bit taller than the Leaning Tower of Pisa, that would tell you something, but wouldn't tell you much. We want to know an absolute scale. We want to know how big these things really are. Is that a really big statue really far away? Or an even bigger statue even further away? What we'll need is some sort of grounding of our scale. We need, that's what we need. We need Michael Jordan on the same scale. Now we can figure out just how tall the Statue of Liberty is, and we can use the Statue of Liberty to figure out how tall other things are, and we can build a ladder out there to the sky. So you see, that's the problem. How big and how far away is this? thing is it really big and really far away or even bigger and even further away that this is the andromeda galaxy is this just a relatively near and we gotta say relative relatively nearby condensing star or is this a star city billions hundreds of billions of stars even further away and how are you going to figure out the distance to that henrietta this is how with cepheid variable stars now, how a Cepheid variable star works is kind of complicated. You can think of it almost like a geyser. Pressure builds up, and then the geyser spouts off, and then relaxes, and then it does it again anyway. Now, Henrietta Leavitt didn't discover the first Cepheid variable star, but she did discover almost 2,000 of them. And these are stars that increase and decrease in brightness, and they can be used to find distance. How do you do that? Well, like I say, you discover lots of them. You catalog lots of them on these photographic plates. This was difficult work. She was employed as a human computer with other people. This is work that was recently dramatized in a play that I didn't see. If they put out a cartoon, I probably will. There's the stars getting brighter and dimmer. So how did Henrietta Leavitt use Cepheid variable stars to measure the distance to the Andromeda galaxy? This is getting complex, but anyway, she did it by drawing this graph. She noticed that the brighter Cepheids had longer periods, just like geysers. The bigger geysers take longer to shoot off, but when they do so, they put out more juice. Anyway, she was able to draw this graph next. All you needed to do was find some Cepheid variable stars in the Andromeda Nebula or in the Andromeda Galaxy. We now call it a galaxy because Cepheid variable stars were found there. And using Henrietta Leavitt's technique, the distance to those stars, the distance to that nebula was determined. And this guy got all the credit. If there's a villain in this story, it's this guy. And, of course, he's not really Van. I'm talking about the guy, not the cat. Edwin Hubble got all the, all the credit. And one of the reasons why is that Henrietta Leavitt died in 1921. This work was done in 1923. Anyway, how does this lead us to the Big Bang and the expanding universe? Well, that's another story that involves this guy, Father George Lemaitre. He was from Belgium. He knew Einstein. They didn't get along. They went to conferences. Uh, Einstein called Lemaitre's math abominable, which is a really tough word for me to say. Anyway, so how does this prove the Big Bang? We'll get to that in a second. First, do you want to play a game of chess? Let's imagine a game of chess, and then all of a sudden, there's a rumbling, and the chessboard starts to grow. The pieces stay the same size, but the chessboard itself starts to grow. What would happen? What would happen to the distance between the different pieces? They would grow, of course, and notice here that the further away the piece was from the left corner, the faster it would be moving. You could graph it. 
Here's a graph of the chessboard. The further away the piece is from the left corner, the faster it's moving from the left corner because all the squares are increasing. I know it's kind of hard to think about. Anyway, this is what an expanding chessboard would look like. All the pieces moving away from you, the further away the pieces are, the faster they're moving. And this is exactly what galaxies are doing. So the same graph, it's all about graphs here, the same graph for the chess pieces works for galaxies. And how do you find the distance to the galaxies? Of, again, thank you, Henrietta Leavitt. She's responsible for that. Now, she had those Cepheid variables as standard candles. There were other standard candles too, but hers were the first, hers were the best. And how do you find the velocity to these galaxies? Well, that's the Doppler shift. If you know about the Doppler shift, it's the reason that this train sounds different as it passes. Well, the change in frequency works for sound. It also works for light. So we have moving spectral lines, and you can find the velocity. But this graph, this graph shows that there is a Big Bang. Of course, no one was around to see the Big Bang. So if someone says they believe in the Big Bang, they just believe in this graph. And that's the current view of the universe that we live in here, which is very different than Harlow Shapley's. And it's all because of Henrietta Leavitt.